Hi all, just looking back at my videos and it's been a month since I put my last video up. I've been extremely busy in the last two weeks at work trying to get the place ready for when people return to work because most, most everybody except a handful of people where I work have been working from home for the last, I don't know, year and a half, whatever it's been. So I've been extremely stupidly busy and also been trying to get my bike sorted out. I've done a fair bit of work to my bike, so general life has, has got in the way quite a bit. And someone in my household has uh, moved out, my stepson, and he's gone his own way and bought a house, so good luck to him. I inherited a gun from him that's been stood in the corner of his bedroom for years. I thought I'd show you in a moment. Please excuse the contrasty poor lighting. I'll, I'll rectify that as the video progresses. Um, today's video is this Edgar Brothers Mod 60. It's got a shocking... Uh, I'll, I'll do a close-up so you can have a really good look at the, uh, the varnish effect. Um, and my terrible memory, I should have done my research before making the video. I can't remember what his name was. The guy I got this gun off anyway, I'm sure he'll refresh me in the comments if he sees this video. Um, I asked him if he'd varnished it and he said he hadn't. I'm not sure, I forgot to ask if he bought it brand new or, or if he bought it second hand. So possibly the person before him did it. Because I can't see, well, I can't see a gun shop or a, a sort of reputable company releasing a gun with a very poor quality finish as as bad as this one to be fair uh, it's probably the worst the worst effect of, of wood you could possibly do but I'll give you a good close-up of that in a moment I've already I, I think I already did it in my last video but in case you didn't see that I'll uh, I'll zoom in get some better lighting sorted out so today's video it will be probably a two-parter um, I'm going to take all the metal work out from from the stock and then uh, <clears throat> I've got various bits and bobs down here on the table that I will show you in a moment. And then uh, start rubbing it down. And to be fair, I'm not experienced at doing this. I've only ever done one, one gun in my entire life. And that's when I was a little kid. I was about 13. And I had a pellet gun. I don't know for whatever reason. It was a BSA. I think he had some nasty marks. I think the varnish and the wood finish was actually quite nice. But there's a couple of scraze marks down the stock. So I bought some sandpaper as a kid, I was only 12, 13, something like that. I'm not sure if it was a BSA Meteor or a BSA Super Meteor. I'm not sure, it's a long time ago. But um, I rubbed it all down and uh, I did a fantastic job of smoothing the gun off. And, um, and then I got some varnish, what was a bit thick, it was stainer and varnish. So I think it was made by Ron Seal in a tin, you know, like a paint tin. And the varnish was very thick and I didn't have the brains in them days to thin thin it down, make it a bit more watery. So I painted it on, did the best job I could do, tried not to leave any brush marks. And it was heavily stained in places where it was coming out with the varnish because it was varnish and stainer in the same tin. It wasn't, it wasn't a huge success, I must admit, but I did as best job as I could, which was still better than this gun. Uh, this is disgusting. So um, this will probably be in two parts. This this video, I will fast forward the rubbing down section, so you you know you're not left there uh, watching somebody boringly rub a gun down. So I'll, uh, I'll with the the modern um, editing software and the videography, I'll fast forward and put it in speed motion. Uh, so the next video will be actually staining the gun with the true oil. So I'll show you the gun a close up of it. Get some better lighting arranged in here. Show you the bits and bobs I've got. And then I'll start taking the gun to pieces. And um, start rubbing it down and speeding the video up. So you don't have to sit here getting bored for a long time. And then also, in my last couple of videos, I did say that I'd start doing some reviews on gun clubs. So I got some footage last weekend at the Thurliston Gun Club in Leicestershire. And I plan going tomorrow, all being well, health, weather, everything else. It's boiling today. It's 20, I haven't looked at the forecast for tomorrow, but it's 27 degrees today. It's, it's too hot for me. I won't complain because it beats rain and certainly wind and everything else. But a very calm day, very humid. 
Saturday the 17th of July and it, it's a very hot day, 27. My car said it was 30, just been to have my hair cut, but uh, 30 degrees of car claims, but 27. So, uh, yeah, so I'll give you a close up of this before I take it to pieces. Fortunately, the metal work on this gun is quite respectable and quite good for a budget gun. I think I said in my last video, I'm sure you can pick these up for about £130 brand new so uh, yeah the metal work the the black the metal blacking or the bluing whichever you describe it as is, is in quite good condition the power on this particular gun is very low it's seven feet pounds through my chrono crony so when I've uh, when I've improved the stock and all the woodwork then the next plan of action is to try and take it to pieces and uh, and buy a new spring and we'll see how we go so we'll do a zoom up, a zoom in, should I say, in case you didn't see the uh, the wood finish on this gun. And now I'll start taking it to pieces, switch cameras so you get a, a wider viewpoint. And um, we'll speed the footage up. The bit on the end, which is hard plastic, which is very unusual because the, the butt end of the gun here is normally a, well, a hard or soft rubber. This one's like a horrible hard plastic it feels horrible when you pull it into your shoulder so I'm not going to take that off for the minute I'm just going to rub the gun down with that on I do intend replacing that either with an adjustable slide up and down type one or a new piece of rubber but either way that will go so I'm not too fussed about taking it off at the moment and um, fortunately I can leave the scope on because the gun is very accurate and the sights are set up so to do today's job I can leave the scope on so let's get cracking, let's zoom in, show you how bad the woodwork is, hopefully if I can get my lighting sorted, and then um, start rubbing it down. So for today's job, I won't be using this today, I'm just rubbing the gun down as I thought I would show you. There's a true oil, I think I paid £12.99 from somewhere on eBay, I'm not sure who the seller was, all I did was go on eBay, type in true oil, uh, a big list of about 10 different ones came up. I chose this one and then it came about three days later. So it says to get some steel wool. No, I haven't, I have got some. Zero, zero. Steel wool now. This is something I've not really had much experience at using. I've never had cause to use steel wool in my life, to be quite honest. And my son says get some gloves on, Dad, because if you get any little fragments in your skin, um, it goes rusty if it penetrates your skin. So. A big bag full of that, zero zero grade. Uh, I've got a 20 pack of sorted uh, sandpaper, I paid three quid for that. And then a close up of the gun. This is how bad it is, look, the finish. I don't know if the camera will actually show you this in its full glory of how bad it is, but it really is terrible. And then there's little air bubbles along the way. There's a lump there in the varnish. I don't, I don't know if we'll be picking it up. There's lots of ridges. Um, it's quite bad. Quite bad. And the other side, I believe, it's got some dry spots as well. What look like it's actually not got any varnish on. But um, So whatever I do, really, hopefully I'll be improving it. I can't see me making the gun worse than it is. Um, there's a festery piece at the end here. So, but it's got a nice grain in the wood. Now whether it'll be dark or is it beech, I presume it's beech wood, but here is a big festery piece at the end there. I'm sure you can see it if I zoom in. There, it's a horrible festery piece. And, and it's a shame because the, the actual uh, the bluing on the gun is quite good. It's just let down by this terrible varnish. I couldn't see uh, I couldn't see uh, a company releasing a gun with the uh, <laughs> stock as bad as that. I really couldn't. But what do I know? It's a cheap bu budget gun. Um, but as I say, the metal work on it is fantastic. So a diamond in the rough. That's what we'll call it. Diamond in the rough. Now then, I've got another gun. If I can remember where I've put it, it's in here somewhere. Ah. The gun you're seeing in front of you, I can't make out what, what all of the writing says. But it actually does say Weslake, made in China. 
and in this lighting I've, I've walked outside and I held it in all different lighting and I've even took a photo of it that I'll try and put on the screen but it actually does say West Lake or West Lake West Lake I think it says it says it there so if anybody's got any info on one of these guns it's a bit crude it's definitely Chinese um, you can see down there look <laughs> That's how, that's how uh, cheaply made the gun is. They haven't even bothered putting a plastic cap or anything on the end piece. You can see the trigger mechanism through the back end. But um, it's already got these included. One at this end, look. And it almost looks like brown paint with a bit of varnish over the top of it. <clears throat> Cheap and cheerful. I've left the dust on it. It is basically... My son had this gun about 18 years ago, I would imagine. He used it for a year or so, and then he gave it to my stepson, and my stepson put it in the corner of his bedroom where it stood for years, and he's just moved out, and it was still in the corner of the bedroom. So that's, it's still got the dust on it. Never used it. It's not been used in possibly 17 or 18 years. So I may be able to do some magic on this one. And we'll see how this, we'll see how the, uh, the, Egg, the Edgar Brothers gun turns out first and then I could possibly do my magic on this and uh, see how this one comes up and no doubt this one will probably need a new spring but it's, wor it's worth doing it's definitely worth doing it's a little gun what will uh, you know a teenager as light as a feather I can pick it up easily with one hand uh, it's still got its open sights on so uh, yeah Right then, let's continue with the rubbing down process. Schwarzenegger must have done that one. going to sand round this I didn't know what to do about the checkering but the checkering actually looks okay I'm just going to sand round the edge a bit rough there that piece Riffin seems to be made in China <laughs> well what's that 120 that will do start off with some 120 <laughs> oh. <sighs> Move me tea. See where we're at just on this piece. Let's get all the stuff off. It all looks like it's uh, this place looks untidy, but I sort of in a fashion there where everything is. Right. Let's see how 
to get all the stuff out, all the powder. Mine will look rubbish, but it was on thick, that uh, varnish, <laughs> that's for sure. Smells this white spirit. Looking better already in a fashion. Keep going on the butt end of the stock. Still some shiny bits on there, some little bits. The odd little line of shine, as you, as you want to call it. Hmm. I might likely do that checkering after all, you know. It's hard in this heat, but very slowly getting there. Got the other side to start on, but whilst it may have not looked very good, it was definitely put on thick. <laughs> so what I've done is I've altered my grade of sandpaper. I've gone for 60, which is more coarse, more rough, sorry, more rough. So I've gone from, I think I started at 120, 120. It just seems to be taking forever, so I've gone down to 60, which is much more rough. And then uh, I'll probably go to 100 when I've got it all looking even. And I've got all the shiny bits off, and I'll continue it to the 100. And then uh, 200 and 400, etc. But we're slowly getting there. Slowly getting there. It's took ages there, low spots where it's shining. It was on really, really, really thick there at the end. It still is there, so it's going to take some serious rubbing. It's almost like it's been dipped in varnish as opposed to painted. at it for 50 minutes now. Still got that bit. That's terrible. Very bad. I've still got that. And then <clears throat> probably now about another hour and a half I reckon till it gets to the point where I can put my true oil on it. It's slow progress. Who dares wins? Patience and perseverance. Right, I'm going to have a rest for about half an hour. So we'll call this video part one. Part two will be when it's in its final stage. Um, the finer sandpaper when I've got the most of it off well when I've got nearly all of it off and then I'm just taking the light scratches out that'll be part two of the video so thanks for watching any comments um, please leave in the box below thumbs up 
or thumbs down, whichever takes your fancy. Till the next one, hopefully very soon. Thanks for watching.